Obama just gave a speech on Iraq, written long after my book was completed. What did he say? I'm not interested in victory. I don't want a victory lap. To him, victory is getting out. That's how he defines it. Not as American success over there, but as American withdrawal. And it's not because he hates America. It's because he thinks it's really bad for America to be an anti-colonial power. So what is the conclusion? The conclusion is really a little startling and to me a little scary. Basically, the conclusion is that America today is being governed according to the dreams of a Luo tribesman from the 1950s. This polygamist, this inebriated African socialist is now, in a sense, setting the agenda for the greatest power in the world through the reincarnation of his dreams in his son. The father provides the inspiration, the son in the way carries it out. America is incredibly being governed by a ghost. Now, having said this, you can see why this is causing immense palpitations in the White House right now. In other words, this theory, which I think accounts for so much of Obama, and in fact has the great merit of interpreting Obama in his own terms. People say, well, Dinesh, where are you getting this weird theory? I say, from Obama. Read his book. He says it explicitly. Now, having said all this, I must say that I am troubled, troubled that, because we're in a competitive world. In fact, many of the poor countries that Obama cares about, they have found a better solution to colonialism than Obama's. Obama's solution is to transfer wealth from us to them. That's why, for example, Obama recently gave grants to Brazil to do oil drilling. I mean, Obama's blocking oil drilling over here, but he's supporting oil drilling in Brazil. So first I thought, he's very clever. He wants the Brazilians to do the drilling with its environmental hazards, and we get the oil. But when I read about the Petrobras case, I realized, no, he's supporting oil drilling, so the oil stays in Brazil. Now again, this is not Al Gore environmentalism. Al Gore believes everybody should consume less because the planet is getting hotter, global warming. Obama could care less whether the planet is getting hotter or colder. He wants us to consume less. He wants us to consume less. And he wants the former colonized countries to consume more. And he is actively promoting that. So the, again, the anti-colonial theory has stunning explanatory power. Having said all this, and troubling though it is, it seems to me ultimately that in the world, good ideas do win. The beauty of it is we are in a competitive world and the best ideas are going to win out. But they only win out if people fight for them. They only win up if we stand up for those ideas against the bad ideas. I think America will come out okay. America will come out again. We are on a kind of a, almost a, a detour, if you will. A detour driven by a very powerful and very unique man. I want to be part of this debate not simply as a political pundit, but also institutionally. And by institutionally, what I mean is, when, we, when I look at America, I feel like we are, in a, we are in a political crisis, we are in an economic crisis, but underneath that is an intellectual crisis, and underneath that is a moral and spiritual crisis. One reason I'm at the King's College is I want to tackle that problem at all the levels. In other words, to have a college that is not in the middle of nowhere, trying to shelter kids from the world, but in Manhattan, taking on the debate with the best Christian economists and the best Christian foreign policy guys and the best Christian historians and philosophers. So I'm going to make a list of the most important Christian thinkers in the world and bring them to Kings. We want to be an intellectual hub that is actively involved in engaging these issues. And long term, we want students to transform these institutions. Because we sit back, we oh, the media is so biased, oh, academia is so biased, and you can complain about it, but ultimately, what are you doing about it? You can complain about it, you can document it. So I say, if we have a college that every year is graduating 500 or 1,000 students, and some of them may go to ministry, but most of them are going into the institutions of law and media and Wall Street and Capitol Hill, that's how you, and, and academia, if you are creating uh, graduate students and then professors at Emory and Duke, that's how you begin to tackle the problem at the ground level. And you do it in C.S. Lewis fashion with Christians animated and excited by what they believe out there to change the world.
We are called in the end not to be of the world, but to be fully in it, comprehending it, engaging with it, and ultimately seeking to build God's kingdom here, in a way, in limited fashion, but nevertheless here in the world. I think if we do this prayerfully and we do it humbly, but at the same time we do it boldly and forcefully and in some senses uncompromisingly, we will not merely endure, we will also prevail. Thank you very much. Thank you.